All right, welcome back here to the Jordy Colada Show, driven and powered by Go Chevrolet. Appreciate our partnership over at WAFB. Remember, if you're looking for our content over at WAFB.com, WAFB.com forward slash Jordy. But if always, as always, if you are uh, looking to keep up with uh, weather alerts, traffic alerts, download the WAFB app to your smart device, your smartphone, to your television. You can watch the Jordy Colada Show over at uh, WAFB Plus, if you download that uh, download that app, and as always, you can see Jacques Doucet, our favorite man, of course, sits on the sports desk over there. He's in Orlando Vacation covering JD. it for uh, WAFB. He has posted up, it looks like in a parking lot this morning. J.D., where are you, where buddy? Are you, J.D.? <laughs> hey, look, you put in so much work in that studio to make it look the way it looks. I could at least walk across the street and try to create some yeah, sort of studio. I, I got love two- that. I too, too. So I'm I'm liking a little Perkins Road deal. I'm the uh, I'm the homeless guy talking to himself by himself here. Out the- <laughs> yeah, oh, right. He's gonna, he's gonna get arrested. Yeah, heads up! Hopefully <laughs> nobody throws something at you while we're live here. Uh, all right, Jacques. So a lot of news here. Everybody buzzing about LSU basketball uh, last night. Get a huge conference win, but obviously you're over in Orlando with the football team and Brian Kelly spoke for the first time yesterday. He announced that Kayshawn was not going to be available. For the bowl game, there minutes after Kayshawn tweeted and said, "You know what? I'm going pro. I'm not coming back." Um, what, what's what's been kind of the shakeout over there since then? Well, we were here um, when the team arrived, so we got the team arriving. That was uh, Tuesday night, right? That was the 27th, um, and then uh, kind of started hearing rumors that Kayshawn had not made had not made the trip. Um, Ask uh, Michael Bonnet about that the following morning, and then it was about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. LSU put out the statement saying that uh, he did not make the trip. He was not going to play in the bowl game, but he was in a role for the spring semester. Uh, so that kind of stayed on track with him uh, following up December the 5th when he yeah. said he was going to return for his senior season. And then uh, I kind of feel bad, Jordy, for the LSU arts team. They put together that beautiful you know, thing <laughs> that right. he was coming back. And then last night, his tweet that he's going pro is like he was leaning up against the wall or something, you know, and just like uh, <laughs> sitting that out. So, um, yeah, uh, Coach Kelly hasn't spoke to the media in terms of a press conference yet. Um, and I don't think he does that until Sunday, the day before the game. Oh, wow. um, the, team, the team has an outing tonight at Top Golf that we are allowed to go to. We, we weren't allowed to go to anything yesterday. And then on Friday, they've got this event where they help out some uh, lead, uh uh, less fortunate kids with the the two teams come together. It's a real cool event. I've seen it over the years, like in 2016 and 17 with Louisville and Notre Dame. And then uh, I think it's Saturday. Uh, you can you can talk to the coordinators for both teams. I'm hoping they bring Drew Brees, uh, even he, oh, even though he's not a coordinator, and some players. And then Sunday is the day before the game in which you get the two head coaches. So that's a little layout of what we get to do here. But uh, man, it, it's a great. It's a great bowl game if you're not going to be in the playoff. I mean, I think the uh, temperature on uh, game day is going to be a high of 81, mm. 5% chance of rain, sunny. It's going to be great. Have you learned anything about Purdue? Do you know the challenge that LSU has here? I mean, other than Breeze being a coach and them losing just about everybody who is meaningful to their, their team quarterback, running back, wide receiver, head coach? Not really, Jordy. Uh, yeah. That's the one thing I was hoping you were not going to ask me about. <laughs> Second question. Uh, Break down the Boilermakers, J.D. <laughs> they've, they've lost their quarterback. Uh, they've lost their, what, 1,400-yard receiver. They've lost their tight end. It was really good. Uh, I guess the question is for LSU is with uh, Jaquelin Roy not playing, yeah. Allie Gay not playing, um, uh, Ojalari obviously not playing. Makai Wingo really the only uh, you know guy that's played a whole lot of snaps there coming back on the defensive line. Can LSU stop the run? I guess that's my big question. Is Purdue's running game going to try to chew up the clock, keep LSU's offense off the field, and can LSU stop the run? I guess that's my big question uh, going into the game. And I, I know some people wrote that LSU's wide receiving core is thin. I don't really. Uh, Prescribed to that as long as you, yeah. I mean, you got Malik Davis, Brian Thomas, um, you know, Mason Taylor there at tight end. Uh, uh, John Embry's proven to be a nice receiver out of the backfield. So I, I like LSU's offensive weapons, I think, going into the game. I agree. Um, there, there, there's a rule in place now where you, you, you can keep your eligibility if you're a redshirt freshman by playing in the bowl game. And there's a couple of, 
of guys that that are curious in you know situations here. A guy like Walker Howard, but then another one's like Quincy Wiggins on the defensive line. As you mentioned, that defensive line being a little low in depth. Have you heard any anyone that's young here that could make an impact or get an opportunity with this with this rule in play? Well, I think that'd be the number one, Quincy Wiggins, yeah. um, and certainly covering him locally. I mean, you know, I always joke about Quincy when I was in high school. I was wearing sweatpants under my uh, jeans and like three shirts to try to look like I weighed 150 pounds. And then you look at a guy like Quincy Wiggins, his senior year at Madison Prep, he's like 6'5", 265. It looks like he can pick you up by the head and just, you know, put you, you know, look just like throw you around. He could. Yeah. Physical freak, right? And just yeah. green. Like, just had played the game of football as a basketball player. And so I, I'm interested to see if he could get some snaps and – because I asked, I think I asked Coach Kelly about him in one of those press conferences late in the, the regular season, and he said that he'd made a tremendous amount of improvement uh, in that one in, in a month. And so I'd like to see him get out there and play. And certainly, this would have been a nice rule a year ago. Um, I love John Trey Kirkland. Glad he got to, glad he got to play in a bowl game and throw three touchdowns. But it'd be nice, uh, you know, for Garrett Mus- Nussmar to maybe keep LSU in the game a little bit a year ago and not burn his red shirt. So. Uh, so, yeah, we'll see. I think it's a good opportunity for LSU to close the year outright, get a win, finish with 10 wins, and transition into next year. Yeah, I was going to ask you, J.D., what's the significance of, of this, this game? Because I think overarchingly, the 2022 season at LSU will always be looked at as a success, right? But this weekend in a vacuum, how do, how do you view this for this particular team and program? Well, I don't know if you agree with me or not, but – LSU hasn't really looked the same since they beat Alabama uh, with a two-point conversion, 32-31. I mean, they wanted Arkansas to their credit, and good teams have to find a way to win. That was a cold day, and the offense was in the deep freeze all day. And uh, good thing Harold Perkins was wearing uh, LSU colors that day because he almost single-handedly won the game for LSU, 13-10. to But, you know, you get pushed around at Texas A&M. And then the Georgia game and the SEC championship, you really move the ball all day, but they kind of bully you. You, you know, they score 50 points. And so uh, you don't want people saying that your success was flukish or you got lucky or this and that. I think if you come out and you really uh, win the game and win the game convincingly, uh, you don't want, uh, you know, three red L's on your yeah. schedule going into the offseason. You want a green W to, to close things out here and, Some people don't care about this stuff. I've always cared about it. Um, You know, when I flip through the LSU media guide, I always look where the teams finish in the the final rankings that year. And LSU winning or losing this game is probably a difference in six or seven spots, dropping three or four spots or moving up three or four spots in the final AP. So that means something to to, to somebody like me. Um, You know, the Fiesta Bowl that year, LSU won it, moved it to the top ten and had ten wins. And, Jordy, you can talk about this too. I mean, What does it mean? So, you know, sometimes like at the end of 2008, for example, that was the the uh, the year after LSU won the national championship. And that was a bad season, seven and five. But they throttled Georgia Tech in the in the Citrus, uh, the Peach Bowl. Uh, They had just hired John Chavis. They got excited about that. And that was a nice ending to the year. We thought Jordan Jefferson was going to be a great quarterback the way he played in that game. But then you look at the Texas Bowl. I mean, LSU ran all over uh, Texas. Texas. Tech in the Texas Bowl that year. Uh, Leonard Fournette looked like yeah. a, man, a man amongst boys. But did that really mean anything when you played Wisconsin in the season opener at Green Bay? No. Uh, it might have hurt LSU because Les, Les Miles thought he could do the same thing against Wisconsin they did against Texas Tech. So it, it's debatable, but I think it's important in this case uh, to not – your last win – you don't want your last win to be against Arkansas and Fanville. You need something to finish out with. Uh, you get any idea on Daniels, on, on his health, on his availability? Do you do you get an idea of how they may use the quarterback position during this game? Well, all I can say is that I saw the video LSU posted on Twitter yesterday, and he was dropping back and throwing, and they had a picture of him throwing the ball. And I would just have to go along with what Coach, Selly, uh, Coach Kelly said, that he's going to be 100% for the game. It's never been a high ankle sprain, so uh, hopefully it's, it's not a problem. I mean, certainly – you know, when I was at Texas A&M that day and he went down twice, it, it looked like he was in a ton of pain. And it's like, man, it, it, what's going on? But uh, I guess he's going to be 100 percent. You know, that, that, that's that's uh, that's what I'm thinking. And certainly LSU feels a lot better about the position if if Nussmeyer has to go in. But, uh, you know, I, I, my feeling is he's going to be fine. 
Uh, Jacques, enjoy the rest of the weekend and the trip, and uh, we will see you when you get back from covering the game, man. Thanks for the time this morning. Happy New Year. Yeah, Happy New Year to you, Lloyd, uh, Stewie. Happy New Year, Jock. Uh, Happy New Year, Jock. Katie's not there today. No, she's, she's uh, a basketball game. Sophie's so, got a basketball game. She's so, in a tournament. So now Florida has palm trees, Corey Raymond, and Jock Ducey. <laughs> <laughs> I think they've got better three. Let me, let me say this real quick, man. When you come here, it's like a melting pot of uh, all different cultures because they're coming to Disneyland. I had a... A young lady behind me this morning sound like Adele. I just want to listen to her talk the whole time. You know, like, Beyonce, your album was monumental. You know? That was great. So. Later, buddy. Send Darren our best. Uh, happy New Year, guys. Happy Thank New you. Year. Happy there New Year. JD, Thanks checking for joining in from Orlando. Too, man. Uh, the best. He's helping us out as we're away over the next couple of days, too, as J.D. will be here. Uh, don't forget our friends over at Katie's Restaurant. They're in New Orleans. Katie's in Mid-City. If you're traveling in for the games this weekend, Sugar Bowl happening. Uh, I saw where Eli Holstein already working out with, with the Crimson Tide. You see that? Uh, as he's taking uh, scout team reps there with, uh, with Alabama. Did you see Saban uh, stretching on the field? Yeah. I mean, I if mean, anybody got it better, yeah. it, it, it's impossible to hate him. I know. He's just meandering around. He, he, so. he uh, a couple, uh, Remember uh, over uh, at Katie's, they've got great choices over there, man, whether it is uh, all of the menu selections that they have to choose from. You can go on at uh, katiesinmidcity.com. I love the swamp fries as an appetizer. They get great, uh, great crab cakes, of course, uh, over there. We always tell you about the St. Louis-style pizza that they offer with the thin crust over at Katie's in Mid City. Uh, go check them out. They are located on Iberville Street right there in Mid-City. And then their sister restaurant, Francesca's, which is located downtown. It's a great sandwich deli uh, that you can stop in. So a couple of selections for you in the city over with uh, Katie's in Mid-City and Francesca's. Katie's is located at 3701, uh, 3701 Iberville Street right there uh, in the heart of Mid-City. Been around since 1984. It's a staple. I tell you all the time, man, if you go in there today for lunch, if you go in there today for happy hour or a drink or go in for dinner tonight, it's going to be packed. It's going to be packed with New Orleanians, with, uh, with people from the neighborhood, uh, and it'll give you a great feel of just a local dive restaurant bar with great personality, good people, and uh, Scott Craig, the owner over there, is one of our great friends and great supporters and will always be thankful for him and what, he has, uh, what he's done for us and helping us promote our show down in New Orleans uh, he does uh, He does a great job for us, and we'll always be grateful for him. Uh, Katie'sInMidCity.com is where you find him online. Katie'sInMidCity.com. We'll take a break and be back with more of the Jordy Colada Show, driven and powered by Ghost Chevrolet. Crab cakes and football. That's what Katie's does. 